When we talk in terms of range and we talk in things about range anxiety, one of the most important things is the regenerative braking. The regenerative process is, is paramount in making an EV system uh, sustainable for everyday use right now. From the moment you start driving a gasoline engine, for example, you'll never have more fuel in the tank because you're always running, you're always using a bit. But that's not necessarily true in an EV. You can actually, as you drive downhill, for example, actually put more energy back into the tank than you previously just had. So that's a pretty neat concept and a little bit of a difficult one to wrap your head around until you really think about what's happening in there. We get about 17 to 24% of the energy uh, we can recapture that energy and put it back in there. So when we talk in terms of range and we talk in things about range anxiety, uh, regeneration is absolutely a very important fundamental cornerstone of this system architecture. Speaking of range anxiety, you know, I talked about the exterior uh, and what we did improvements to the exterior of the vehicle, but also in the interior, you know, you have auxiliary power, you know, your HVAC system, you have your HID headlamps, you know, those areas also we really concentrated on trying to minimize the auxiliary draw. The electric vehicle gave us a, a lot of good opportunities or exciting opportunities uh, to do for exterior lighting. Um, especially in the area of energy uh, consumption or energy efficiency, power consumption optimization. We were able to use a lot more LED lighting technology. A typical low beam unit uses 55 watts or 110 watts, um, whereas we're cutting that down by about 48%. From a DRL, the daytime running lamp, we're getting about a 78% savings on that too. Power consumption is an important concept in, in EV vehicles and uh, as our customers are, are uh, understanding this new technology, it's important for them to recognize that certain things other than driving, operating your headlamps, operating all of the uh, ECUs within the vehicle, all those smart electronics, those have a power draw. Um, obviously we need to run the vehicle so those are part of the real life. But in addition to that, uh, some of the things that you probably uh, don't think immediately about uh, would be, for example, your air conditioning or your heating. The internal combustion engines have always given off heat. That's part of what they do. It's actually part of their inefficiency, where we're not actually using that, uh, that power from the gasoline to move the car. It's, it's actually lost in heat. We don't have that on an EV vehicle, obviously. So we have to now look at a way to actually manufacture heat. It's important that when we think about energy management, we provide solutions to our customers to be a bit more uh, judicious with their heating use. An example, we use about, uh, say, on an average, to, to heat up a cabin from a very cold temperature, we might use four kilowatts of energy. Conversely, the seat heaters run about 86 watts of energy. It was important to us, uh, I think, as a mobility provider, a mobility solution provider. I mean, that's what we are. We are a, a giant company that's global that provides mobility solutions to the entire world. And as part of that, um, sustainable mobility is very, very important. Once again, uh, you know, uh, kudos to the engineers on this program. They did a great job in, in all areas. And, uh, you know, to be honest, this, this vehicle wouldn't be where it's at right now without the expertise of the team that we put together for this program. It's, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was great. It was really, it was great for me to see uh, so many enthusiastic engineers and, and so willing to do whatever it took to bring this vehicle to where it is today. And I, I, Hats off to them, they did a great job.